fact that of the 116,000 architects in this country, only about 2,300 are African Americans, and even fewer, only about 450 of those, are black women. Addressing that problem are Camilla Watson, an associate prin principal and interior designer at the Seattle office of ZGF Architects, and her colleague Dana Forfalo, a technical designer in the Seattle office. Uh, both of them have been working on ZGF's uh, diversity and inclusion action group for the last four or five years. And they're gonna tell us what, the, uh, what this group is doing to improve uh, relations and to in, in enhance uh, diversity and inclusion at their firm and what that might mean for other firms uh, around the country. So uh, Dana, why don't you kick us off on what the diversity and inclusion action group is, is doing? I think that for the R5 point plan, we really are trying to focus really on relationships and on um, making the profession more accessible because one of the things that we've realized, you, you just talked about the statistics about how few uh, black architects there are in the industry and, and especially for, for black women, yeah. uh, which I think is particularly true. Um, and so one of the things that we've been focusing on is really getting um, the word out there just about the profession in general and making sure that it is more accessible to mm -hmm to mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, we've talked a little bit about um, the ACE mentorship program, but there are other programs that our office has gotten involved in. And it's anything from um, the hip hop architecture camp, which Camilla can talk a little bit more about, to um, really going into schools, not just high schools, but junior highs and elementary schools as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Camilla and I were fortunate enough to go into um, a junior high school a year ago on their career day and expose them to um, to our professions and what we do on a daily basis. But I think for us, part of what we've realized through this process is it's about making the profession um, not only more readily available, but seem but appear more accessible. We want people to really understand what it is because I think in a lot of instances, there isn't very much information out, yeah. out there about what we do. Yeah. Uh, Kabila, uh, tell us about this hip hop camp that you, you, you were involved in. Yeah, so um, we, um, um, Dana mentioned that, you know, we're really working on kind of getting, um, uh, making the profession feel more accessible to, you know, students who are in college, but trying to reach them even younger. And in part of some of our other kind of um, external mm -hmm. engagements with the University of Washington, we were presented with an opportunity to participate in a hip hop architecture camp, which started in Chicago um, and has since grown nationally. I, I don't want to mis misrepresent the numbers, but I think they're in 13 cities across the country. Mm -hmm. And for two weeks every summer, um, you know, you get hundreds of kids together um, pre-COVID. We were able to get together this year. It was done online, but it takes architecture, it takes design, and it, it just puts it into a package that kids in a younger age group, the junior uh, age group can really understand. And so that's hip hop, that's music, that's expression mm -hmm. that they're already familiar with. Mm -hmm. So tying together those two elements makes it really tangible. Mm -hmm. And it's been really exciting and really rewarding to see what these kids come up with, you know, wow. when you give them a program that like SketchUp. Sounds like, sounds like Hamilton for architects. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do make a rap video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, a couple of things. Uh, you know, we, we talked about Ace Mentor and, and a lot of, particularly the construction co uh, 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 companies are pretty strong in that area. But you, you, you want to dig more into the historically black colleges and universities as well, mm -hmm. the HBCUs. But right. you're in Seattle, the, the nearest HBC to you is in California, and it's mm -hmm. a medical school. And you know, how are you going to do that? How are you going to how are you going to make liaison with with uh, with HBCUs uh, to mm -hmm. to bring people bring uh, African American and other minority groups into uh, firms like like uh, ZGF? Yeah. Well, I I can say that you know it has to be intentional. You mm -hmm. know, every firm 
recruits. We go out to schools and we right. create these relationships. And we can't talk about the lack of diversity um, in our offices and continue to go to the same schools to create the same pipelines. Yeah. You know, we have to really think about those relationships and how we're forming them. And so for ZGF, that started with connecting to the dean of architecture and a dean of construction of several different schools. And just recently, the last two or three years, we've been able to create that kind of relationship with Howard University in DC, as well as Tuskegee uh, in Alabama. Um, so that is not just about proximity. You know, we get uh -huh. students from all over the country. Let's now start looking at very specific programs that we feel are underrepresented. They may not come to us, but I think it's our responsibility to go to them. What about Dana? What about contracting and and uh, business relationships with minority firms and so forth? What, what are you doing in that area? Well, um, what we have started doing in our Portland office, they've they've spearheaded this effort, um, and it's uh, being extended to other offices uh, in our firm. But they have started collecting lists of uh, minority-owned uh, firms consultants mm -hmm. in particular um, and just really taking a look at our practices of who are we who are we using on our projects who are we working with on our projects and being more deliberate and thoughtful about that mm -hmm. um, to make sure that we are uh, walking the walk so to speak and um, really providing opportunity and forging those relationships and supporting these firms that are um, that that are minority owned. Would you, would you agree, you know, Camilla used the word intentional. Mm -hmm. It's really got to be intentional, doesn't it? I mean, it, it really is. has to be, you've got to say, we, we've got a goal here. Yes. Let's put a number on it and we're going to go for that. And we're going to try to try to beat it and, and then increase that, increase that goal over the years. Is that, is that, am I, am I right Absolutely. on that Camilla and, and Dana? Yeah. 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 I mean, those are the kinds of things that, that, uh, just talking about it and uh, is not going to do it. You've got to um, go ahead. That's true. That's true. Talking about it alone isn't isn't going to change it. And so, um, part of what I I believe I had iterated was that we're looking at the historical data of, of projects that we've been on in the past and looking at the numbers too, because we need to understand where we're coming from to understand where we need uh -huh. to get to as well. Okay. I think that's a really key component. Set, setting a kind of base, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, Camilla, do you, do you feel that, uh, to both of you, do you feel that uh, uh, you, you're making progress here? Do you, do you have a sense that this is going to lead, lead to uh, some accomplishments? Mm -hmm. I, I do, um, and we've already seen, you know, you know, um, the dynamics changing a little bit in uh, all six of our offices across the country, um, because we do definitely ZGF consider ourselves just one firm, six offices, and so we're sharing information, we're sharing resources, and um, I think we've seen those connections really start to pay off, but that doesn't mean that, you know, the work slows down. It just means that that's motivation to keep going and building, and to that point, um, kind of going back to what Dana said about external communication to make this profession feel accessible, ZGF, part of the five-point plan, is also, you know, having internal conversations so that we're not just bringing different, um, you know, mm -hmm. racial or ethnic groups into the office just to meet a quota or just to have diversity, but then how do you take the next step to make sure that people feel like they belong in mm -hmm. the office, they feel like they belong in the profession, they feel like their voice is heard, um, um, at every level, the social engagement in the office, the project level, mm -hmm. the opportunities that they're given. And so the it's definitely a multi-pronged, you know, um, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's uh, I think I've heard, I think I've heard you say it's a place at the table. It's a voice yeah. at the table and, yes. and yes. it's being heard and then it's mm -hmm. being acted upon. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. All right. Let's leave it. Let's leave it there. That uh, I think we've got a, got a good outline of of what you're working on at ZGF, and I want to thank uh, Dana Forfalo, a project architect at, at ZGF, and Camilla Watson, associate principal and interior designer. Pardon me, uh, from before uh, at ZGF. Thank you both for your time today. Thank, thank you. you.